Hello everyone, and today we're going to be doing another question from the ACCA F5 exam past papers. The question today that we're going to do is from the December 2014 exam paper from section B, question 1, and it's on learning curves. Now, again, this is before September 2016, so this is the old exam format. So section B had your written questions rather than section C like now, right? So keep that in mind and the written questions could be for 10 marks rather than 20 marks. It's an old format, but the question is quite relevant. They still ask questions like this on learning curves in the exams today. So we're going to be doing this question for practice. Okay, so let's get right into it. Let's start by labeling our question because we need to make it clear to the marker what we're doing. And since it has multiple parts, let's label our parts too because students tend to not label their parts and the marker is not sure which, where one part starts and one part ends, right? Uh, we're gonna be doing this question in an Excel spreadsheet because it has calculations involved and it's likely when it's a calculation heavy question in the exam, ACCA will provide a spreadsheet rather than a word processing software. That being said, there can be situations where you need to do calculations in a word like word like software right so you need to be able to do that as well that being said we're going to be practicing this in a spreadsheet okay so it's a 10 mark question we have 1.8 minutes per mark that means approximately 18 minutes to do this question so let's see how that goes and as always we start with the requirement so the first requirement Calculate the price which Jericho expects to charge for the new seat. Okay, so we need to calculate the price. The question is for five marks. And if we notice something important, they've already said note the learning index for 75% learning curve is minus 0 0.415. So we need to use this. No need to bother calculating the learning rate, right? Uh, the index. Index meaning in your formula y is equal to ax raised to power b. This is a value for b, which is log of r learning rate over log of 2. Okay, but if they've given you the value already in the question, use that. Don't bother calculating it for 75%. Okay, so we need to find the price. Let's see what information we have. Jericho has developed a new type of luxury car seat. Okay, and we need to find the price for the seat. The estimated labor time for the first unit is 12 hours, but a learning curve of 75% is expected to apply for the first eight units produced. Okay, so we have the value for the first uh, unit, 12 hours, and the learning rate applies to eight units. The cost of labor is $15 per hour. The cost of materials and other variable overheads is $230, and Careco plans on pricing the seat by adding a 50% markup to the variable cost per seat and the labor cost being based on the incremental time taken for the eighth unit. So this is a typical type of learning curve question that you can get in the exam. That you need to calculate labor cost as part of a larger calculation based on the learning curve, right? So we need to find the labor cost based on the learning curve, add that to the other costs, apply a markup of 50% to get our price. Okay, so let's start. They say that it's based on the incremental time to produce the eighth unit. To find the time to produce the eighth unit, we need to find the total time for eight units less the total time for seven units, okay? So what we can do is we can start with the total time for seven units. Now remember that the learning curve formula is based on average time, right? Y is equal to AX raised to power B is average time. To convert it into total time, we need to multiply it by the number of units, which is x. So basically we're finding x into y. So we know that the value of a is 100 into x for seven units, seven raised to power b, which will be log of, oh, sorry, they've already given the value, right? We need to keep that in mind. Raised to power minus 0 0.415. Almost made a mistake there. So if I had typed log of 0.75 over log of two and the marker had seen that, he might even be inclined to deduct some marks, okay? Because they'd already given me a value there, even though the value might not be that much difference, right? And this will be multiplied into the number of units, which is seven. So the total time for seven units is, uh, sorry, why did I say 100 hours? This should be 12 hours, right? So 12 into, so it's 37.46 hours. Likewise, 
we'll take the total time for eight units, which is going to be the same formula. Control D to bring it down quickly, right, as a shortcut. We just replace the seven with eight. So we get 40.50. So the incremental time for the eighth unit will be the difference between these two. Now, one question students might have is, can we do all of this in one cell? Yes, you technically can, but the marker will like you a lot more if you present it step by step, right? If it's more presentable, it's easier to mark, it's easier to follow, it's easier to understand. And markers are human beings too. So if you make them like you more, they'll be more inclined to give you more marks. So better to show the calculation step by step. But technically, even if you were to do the whole calculation for this part in one cell, the marker would have to follow through with it. If you've done it right, he would still have to give you the marks, right? But make it easy for them. Okay, so we have the incremental time. Now the incremental time, we know that the cost of labor is $15 per hour, right? So we can find the labor cost labor cost is this value into 15 so around 45 and the other costs are 230 so we'll add that as well material and other costs is 230 so our total variable cost is the sum of these two right is equal to sum or alt plus for the shortcut, 275.65, right? They don't have grid lines in the uh, ACCS spreadsheet exam software, at least not so far as I know. So we can use bold, italic, underline to highlight these parts to distinguish them from the rest of the answer, right? Okay, and then we have to apply a markup of 50%. Markup of 50%. Markup is based on cost. So we'll multiply this by 50% to get 137, which means our price is equal to this amount plus this amount, 413.47. So we have our answer over here, okay? And that's all they're asking for. So five marks done right here with a nice calculation. Okay, let's move on to part B. Okay. So in part B, it says in the requirement, first requirement, calculate the actual rate of learning and state whether this means the labor force actually learned more or less quickly than expected for three marks, okay? Now we know that a lower learning rate means they learned more quickly, a high learning rate means they learned less quickly. And calculating the learning rate, okay. The first phase of production has now been completed for the new car seat. The first unit actually took 12.5 hours to make and the total time for the first eight units was 34.3, at which the point the learning effect came to an end. So they're planning on adjusting the price to reflect the actual time it took to complete the eighth unit. So we need to calculate the learning rate based on this data. The first unit took 12.5 hours, the first eight units took 34.3 hours. Now, whenever we have a learning rate calculation, we should put a table next to it, right? Our traditional learning curve table. So we have units, we have average time per unit, and we have total time, right? Or well, let's just shift it here, even though the cell is a bit white, okay. So, basically, we should know the pattern, as we've covered in our videos, one, two, four, eight, right? Every time we move down, we double this. And we can al align this to center to make it more presentable, right? So, and we can align these to center as well. Now, average time per unit, the first is always A, the time for the first unit, okay? And every time we move down, we multiply A by the learning rate, R. So this becomes AR, this becomes AR squared, right? And this becomes AR cubed. Likewise, total time is simply the product of the units and the average time per unit. So one into A, A, two into AR, two AR, four into AR squared, four AR squared, right? Technically, I don't need to write all of this because we know which part we want, but I thought we'd just do a recap here, right? AR cube. Technically, we need just the total time for 
eight units. So we needed this part here, right? Eight AR cubed. So what we know is that they've given us the total time values. So for the first unit, it's 12.5. So A is 12.5. And for the first eight units, the total time was 34.3. So we have the equivalent numerical values here. Now, what that means is basically 1A is equal to 12.5, 2, 8AR cubed is equal to 34.3. So we can say A is equal to 12.5 and 8AR cubed, oops, 8AR cubed is equal to 34.3. In other words, 8 into 12.5 into r cubed. Again, we're showing the working here, though technically you could just do the working in your head and apply the formula directly. But again, we need to make it easier for the examiner. Is equal to 34.3. 8 into 12.5 would be 100. So r is equal to the cube root of 34.3 divided by 8 into 12.5. Cube root raised to power 1 by 3, right? Oops, I forgot to put the equal sign there. So 0 0.7 or 70%, right? So we can just make a small point. This is part one of the requirement. So the learning rate is 70%. This means that they learned, they had a previous learning rate of 75%, so it's lower, so they learned faster, right? Learned faster than expected. Right, one sentence to conclude, and there we have our calculation. So technically, we didn't need to make the whole table, but we would need to put a sentence there to explain 8AR cubed is equal to 34.3, etc. Right? Okay. So that's the first part. The second part, briefly explain whether the adjusted price chart by Cherco will be higher or lower than the price you calculated in part A. You are not required to calculate the adjusted price. So we need to do analysis without doing the actual calculation based on these updated numbers. Okay, so it's for two marks. Technically, you need two good points, but as a bonus feature, we'll put more than two points. Let's see how many points we can come up with just for practice, right? So what things could impact the learning rate and the price given our calculation? Well, first of all, let's start with the first amount of data. The first unit took 12.5 hours. We expected it to take 12 hours. So if it took more time than we expected, the labor cost would be more than we expected. And therefore the price would be more than we expected. So the first point we can write is, given that the first unit took 12.5 hours, which is more than the expected 12 hours, comma, we can just move down when we run out of space on the screen. Yes so that it flows like a paragraph, right? Just move down to the next row. We would expect that the labor cost and hence the price will be higher. So that's one point, okay? What else? Then we have another point, the learning rate itself, 70%. So they actually learned faster than was expected. And if you learn faster, that means you would take less time. So we can make a opposite point. However, since the learning rate was lower than expected, the learning was faster, right? Let's put faster up there. No, it looks better. Oops. This would imply 
that the price will actually be lower. So we have two contradicting points. Now we need to give a conclusion. So what's one last point we can make? Because we, remember, they need us to give a conclusion, right? We need to explain. So the last point we can make is there's one more piece of data. The first eight units took 34.3 hours. But we have that data calculated up in part A, remember? We calculated the time for the first eight units as 40.5 hours. So it took us less time than we expected. So that means less labor cost and less price. Ultimately, the first eight units took less time than expected. This means that our labor cost and price will be lower than expected, right? So whenever we have analysis, if they don't go specific as in explain why the price will be higher or explain why the price will be lower. If they haven't given you specific, you can cover points on both sides of the argument, but give a conclusion, right? What do you think? Sometimes they'll be explicit, like in this case, we can explicitly say that it will take less time uh, but, and the price will be less. But in some cases, you might not be sure. You just go by the stronger argument in your opinion and say for X, Y, Z reason, I believe this is the conclusion, okay? So there we go. We've covered the question. And hopefully you've learned something from this video. So remember, label your parts, show your calculation and steps, make it go step by step so that it's presentable and the examiner can follow. And hopefully you'll be all set for the exam. Okay, so thank you very much and I'll see you guys next time.